<laughs> so welcome everybody and welcome to energy play shop um, number 25 today is november the 10th 2022 so today we are actually on the the third part of our um journey to clear or detoxify declutter the root chakra so i've mentioned in the previous two play shop that the root chakra um is really our connection connection to this reality this playground and so one of the the major symptom of this um anything that's wrong with the root chakra is that because we we have any some blockage in our root chakra that's why we are not quite connected to this reality we are not quite um, connected to the resources that are available to us in this reality so that's why it may manifest as um financial issues so that's why the we we have this um money talk last time and and so there's more of that money talk or <clears throat> I also mentioned last time that money is actually way more than just money. Money is actually our ability to be able to experience and create the reality that we want to have while we are here on earth. So that's actually, um, however, um, because of the I would say the the times or the, the the collectively we want to experience a rather limiting and um, I would say a very low vibration um, experience collectively. We all all of humanity actually wanted to have this dark experience because from a um, eternal essence point of view not not from the the uh, being a human being point of view of course from a human being point of view we want everything to be good and um smooth everything goes well however from an eternal being point of view we want to experience what how difficult it is <clears throat> um how low the vibration can be and be able to experience the ability for us to bounce back and still get back to the connection of who we truly is, which is eternal essence playing in this playground. So um, we collectively wanted to have that amount, like this really insane amount of um, difficulties and and traumas and all those things that we we wanted to experience all of that so that when we are at the other end we are able to remember even despite all of these difficulties we still remember who we truly are it's we are powerful creators and when we get to that it's it's like the darker the night the more brilliant and um beautiful the light and the morning will become so that's now that we are um, shifting out of that paradigm of being in an inverted environment where everything is working against us now we're getting into the environment where our environment actually works for us and wanted to give us everything that we want however because we've been so pushed down and um, um completely distorted so right now we're in the process of letting go of all that old restrictions we we didn't know we we didn't know that we actually 
have so much power that we can create anything we want. And we didn't know that the universe actually is here to support us because a lot of the times I know I certainly have, have um, that is that why is everything so difficult? How come everything is just not going the way that I want? And when we have this kind of mentality and all of a sudden we come into this um, environment where the universe wants to give me what I want. And I'm still in the mindset that everything is so difficult. And so it kind of create a, um, um, the, the opposite experience of what we actually want. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the introduction to this play shop. So as in the other play shops, I just want to um, let you know that the, <clears throat> our gender for this time um, is still the same as before. We want to, you know, at first open up for any questions about previous week, um, kind of an, an introduction that way. And then we're gonna have a presence meditation. And then we're gonna talk about um, power, that we actually are powerful. And um, how can we get back to being the powerful creators that we actually are? And how can we use that in order to clear all the, um, the money issues that we may be experiencing in in this reality right now so any questions first question is any questions from all of you ask us to do some homework remember yes we will be that will be um used at at the uh, there there is a um clearing money okay patterns process so that will be what the the homework is going to be used at. So thank you for reminding us. And if you don't, don't worry. Um, you're just going to, if you didn't do the homework, don't worry. I will just actually um, just re kind of um, go through it very briefly. And then you can just pick something that you can work on during our release process. So if there are no more no other questions, then let's just do our presence meditation first. So the idea of the presence meditation is for us to let go of all the other distractions that we may have faced earlier in the day, because we each have very busy lives. And so this presence meditation is really to smoothly transition each and every one to be in this moment because this moment is all we have and this is this moment is where we can actually create so in order to come into the presence let's first take in a deep breath so just breathe in very deeply and slowly And just let it all go. Take in another deep breath. And let it all go. Take in one more deep breath. And let it all go. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And each time you breathe in, call back more of your attention to yourself. So call back all of your attention into yourself. Call back all of your energies 
to yourself. Call back all versions of yourself back into your body in this moment. And each time you breathe out, just let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. So use your breath. Use each and every one of your breath to become more of yourself as you call back all of your attention, all of the energies that you have sent out to other people, other events, just call it all back to yourself. And as you breathe out, just simply let go of any energies that does not support you in this moment. And after a, a few moments, of really practicing and exercising this, of calling back all of your own attention and energies to yourself. I just feel that shift in your body. However you feel this shift is perfect for you. And just notice what it feels like when you have all of your attention back on yourself, when you have all of your energies back into yourself, when you are no longer looking outside to distract yourself, when you are fully giving your attention, your energy to yourself. You just feel what that feels like in your body. And just remember what that feels like. And when you truly feel like it is more of you within your body. Then you can come all the way back into the room and open your eyes. Welcome back. So um, first thing I want to talk about is really the fact that we are powerful beings. So what do I mean by that? Because um, How do we know that we are powerful beings? I, I remember, I think uh, for all, for some of you, maybe not all of you, for some of you who may have had the, the, the fortune to spend some time in the workshop or even um, the, the most recent um, Tuesday, I think um, Sifu James have a, uh, an evening, like just just an hour or so with us. And, and he also mentioned that. He mentioned it actually the last couple of, I would say for pretty much all of this year, every time I go on a workshop, um, attend one of his workshop, he, he started to repeat over and over again 
And um, at first I didn't quite notice it. And then the more he mentioned it, the more <clears throat> I appreciate why he's doing it. He, he, what he's saying is that he reminds us that we are powerful beings. Or more exactly, we are powerful creators. He's been saying that pretty much every time that we <clears throat> go into a workshop with him. He would say that, that we are powerful beings. And I don't know how many of you feel like you are powerful beings or powerful creators in this moment. So maybe you can ask yourself this question right now is, do you really feel that you are a powerful being in this moment? How many of you feel that you are a powerful being in this moment? And you don't really have to answer how I would share how I feel about that. Um, I know on some level that I am a powerful being, not because I feel powerful, but because I've been told by, well, Sifu James, for example, and not just Sifu James, there's been um, some of my other, the other people that I really um, resonate with, even before Franco passed away, he told me in, in specific, and also in general to everyone else that we are powerful creators as well. Maybe not exactly using those words, but he also remind us that we are powerful. And it, and I, I do know that um, pretty much from any of the um, other light workers that I resonate with, that's the same message that they they repeat from Jason Nestus, from Carrie Kay. Um, so they they all I'm I only mention a few. There are so many others. However, they always mention that. They always acknowledge that that we are powerful beings. However, even after hearing all of those, I don't I don't really feel. Like, I don't know my own power. I do notice that on some level, I know that I am powerful being. So the only difference is that I, myself, have not really embodied or experienced that power within myself. And so that is, that. I think that is the, um, so what is the, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is really knowledge is what we know. But wisdom is what we have actually lived and embodied. So there's that that gap between what a part of us, of me um, in specific, a part of me know that I am powerful. But I in my life so far, there are maybe very fleeting moments that I actually was able to live and embody that powerful part of me. And so that's why, even though on some level, I, f I know I'm powerful, but on a most practical day-to-day -day level, I don't, uh, like, I don't feel that I have the the use of all that power yet. I, I haven't quite learned how to channel that power yet. And I I don't want to uh, to kind of put um, my own beliefs in, in you. However, <clears throat> I would guess that, you know, maybe that's why most of us, even though we've heard that, you know, we are powerful creators, but we, we have a hard time um, believing that or actually living and embodying that powerful creator that we actually are on some level. So how can we do that? How can we actually embody that? How can we actually get access to our own power? So that really is um, 
what I'm trying to get at. One of the the idea that I want to to convey and share with all of you is I noticed that because I haven't lived or embodied um, and be able to wield my own power. That's why even though I know on some level I'm powerful, I'm I'm not not um, owning that power yet. So one of the, the the thing that I have really started to do, I don't say I started um, a while ago, but I'm really getting to be more serious about that now is to really observe how I create my own experience because if I can really understand how I get to create what I'm experiencing, the real, what I think of as reality right now, then I would truly be able to connect to that, that power, the power that is behind me that allow me to actually create that. That if I can actually observe how I create my own experience, then I can really get to the point where I own my ability to create, that I really know that I'm the creator. So um, I just want to give an example of like a really very um, minor example of the most recent way that I created my own experience, that I I realize how I create my own experience. So um, I like to make my own clothes. I, I didn't make any of these, but you should, but I really do enjoy making my own clothes. Sometimes the knitting, sometimes I make um, um, dresses for myself. Um, and so one of the, the, the dress that I have been um, working on, beautiful dress. I love that pattern, love the material. And I stopped maybe for about a couple of, of weeks now and I haven't quite finished it yet. And I, I, I kind of you know, looking at that beautiful half finished dress and I cannot really understand how come all of a sudden I have no desire to finish that dress. And when I really looked at it, it's because I don't have the buttons for it because um, that dress has a, a line of buttons in front of it. And, and so I wanted to start to you know, get the buttons for it. And, and I want to actually stay within a certain budget. So um, like I can go out and buy you know, the most expensive buttons, but I don't want to do that because it's just a dress I have. It's, it's really for my own vanity that I want to make that dress. So when I was looking for buttons and I was actually exploring a lot of options, I actually think of making my own buttons and I was actually doing YouTubes, looking at YouTubes, how to make my own buttons. And I actually, it's fascinating. There's actually a whole slew of um, people that, that, explore so many magnificent, magnificent ways of making their own buttons from scratch, from nothing. So that was that was really a fun um, waste of time, really fun waste of time. And then one day I was like, okay, I've, I've done all the exploration, I've wasted enough time and really think of it, I just don't have the time or the patience to make my own buttons even though I have figured out exactly how to make it but I really looked at myself and and really asked is that really something that is going to bring me the most joy is to make buttons and my answer is no I don't want to but you know I still need buttons what I'm going to do so one day it was uh, on the weekends so I just I wanted to go out for a walk so I just walk and um, and I have um, there. I think there's an 
a um, like thrift store fairly close to me. So I just walked over there and looked at and see if they have any, you know, buttons or, or back of those assorted, assorted buttons that I can buy so I don't have to make my own buttons. But I didn't really find any buttons. And I was kind of you know, disappointed. But within that plaza of where the thrift store is, there is a Dollarama. So I just went in there. I was thinking of other things, actually. I, I needed something else from there. And you know what? I actually saw that they have buttons for sale there for like $2. I have a bag of really um, buttons of all shapes, size, design. And I was like a kid in the candy store. Oh my God, I found my buttons and it's really on a very um, affordable too. So, you know, I got myself two bags and then the next day I actually went somewhere else and I, there was a Dollarama there. So I looked in there and they have buttons that are actually even cheaper. It's like, like 50 cents cheaper. So I got, in the span of two days, I have four bags of buttons. So I have a whole box of buttons now. So I can make all the dresses, all the blouses that like for the next year and I would still have, have buttons. So that's, that's the manifestation. That's the creation is I, there are things, something that I want, something that I desire, buttons. And so I explore all my options and look at all the different ways that I can get buttons. I can make it myself and go to a thrift store and go to Dollarama, all of that. And I actually took action. I went out to the thrift store, didn't get anything, but somehow I have a hunch that I need to go into Dollarama. And I, I just got all the buttons that I would want for the rest of the next 30, 360 days. So that is really illustrates um, that for me, tells me the kind of creator. I know it's something that is so minute, it's buttons. It's something so small, but from the small things, it actually gave me um, an insight into how we actually create. Is that we create from our thought. I wanted buttons, so I have that. And so I send that message out to the, the universe. I want buttons. So do I want to create them? Do I want to buy them? All the different options. I explored them and I actually took actions multiple ways. I actually really taught myself how to make buttons. So I explore that. But I do know that, you know, I don't want to spend all that time to to make the buttons because I know myself. I love to sew, but I don't love to make buttons. So like really getting clear on what it is that you want to create. And then um, send your 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 desire, what you want out in the universe, and then take action. Because I can do all of that, but if I don't um, actually go out to the store to look at some buttons, how are buttons going to come to me? They're not going to, um, you know, they're not going to just drop on my head. However, if I take some action, really, I was just uh, going out to enjoy the walk anyways. However, it's, it's like I took, I took very little effort, but I actually got so many buttons, all beautiful colors, different colors, different design. I had so much fun just looking at those buttons admiring them and thinking of ways that I can incorporate them and you know just just 
just being creative with them. And so that's that's how we create. We have that is we create with our mind and then we take action and then the universe will just give us all that we want. And that's that's what um, creation is. And yes, I this is just one example. And I have other examples as well, which I'm not going to bore um, all of you at this time. Maybe in some of the, the later times I can, you know, show some of the, share some of my other stories that I've observed how I create. <clears throat> and, and so when I notice that, that's how creation actually is. Even for something as 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 um, insignificant as buttons, or because my life is not going to, I'm not going to die if I don't have buttons. However, it's just from something as insignificant as that that I get to learn how we actually create, or or more specifically, how I actually create. Because how each of you create may be slightly different. However, it's the um, the majority of it is this, like very similar. So, I just want to to kind of summarize um, what I believe, or from my experience, is that we the universe always wants to give us what we want. It is really how we communicate with the universe, what it is that we want. And um, and I, I want to recall and is, is that even the Bible said that in the beginning there was the word. And so in, in um, creation that's being, that was kind of documented and in the Bible, um, I, I must say I haven't really looked at some of the other um, so Bible is more the Christian um, religion. I haven't quite really looked at other religions. They may think of they they may have creation myth in something different, but the Christian creation myth is that in the beginning there's the word. So what is word? And I've been thinking about what is the word. Word does not mean words. Words is really sound, sound and intention. How we would create, how we create is really from our intention, not necessarily in words, because the universe doesn't quite understand words. Um, because words is like does the universe understand English or Chinese or Spanish or Japanese? Because when we think of words. That's what comes to me is, oh, is that a Japanese word or is that an English word? So that's that's what I mean by the the universe does not understand words, but it understand intention. And by intention, I don't mean words. Intention is something that is beyond words. And because it is beyond words, that's why we we have difficulty um, creating because we don't understand what intention actually is. Intention, I think some other people have actually um, kind of deciphered that. Intention is really a state of being. It's, it's like when I was going out, um, on the walk uh, before I I got my bags of buttons is yes in my mind I I was thinking of looking for buttons but there are also other things on my mind as well I was going out to enjoy a nice walk I was going out in, to enjoy the sunshine of that day the movement and all that that comes with going to um, yeah, 
get some buttons or at least look for some buttons. <laughs> and why somehow I was kind of guided to go from where I intended to go at first, which was the thrift store. And then I was guided somehow to explore that um, that plaza. So it was like, it was a no brainer. I was attracted to go to that specific place where I got my bags of, um, of, of buttons. It's all simply unconscious. It's unconscious mm -hmm. because my desire, my intention was to get buttons. So that intention somehow drew me to explore these places. And when I really go with that flow, I was able to really manifest what it is that I really wanted. Uh, what I set out to get is some buttons, more buttons than I can use maybe for a long time. So, so I tried, to, so I just want to summarize it again is that the universe, how we communicate with the universe is by intention and vibration so intention is not words so if we think of saying that i want for example i want we're talking about money now so let's let's say i want a thousand dollars for whatever purpose let's say there's a course that i want to take that is about a thousand that costs a thousand dollars so so the the universe does not understand it. When I say this, when I use these words, however, how I feel about that course, the universe can understand. Because I, let's say if I, it, it's, um, okay, let, let me kind of um, bring it into a more tangible um, exercise is, there is a course that I want to take from Enelia Benz, and this is for real. Enelia Benz, and it's about 600 US dollars. So maybe about, cost about maybe $800 um, Canadian. So, so this, that is the amount of money that I want to manifest. So how do I actually go about manifesting that if I just say okay I want 800 bucks in order for me to buy that Emilia Benz course and I send it out to the universe will the universe really hear me and understand me maybe not because the universe really does not understand the words that I that I send out however if I really feel into that course. Why is that course something that I want? It's it's actually a course about um, how to prepare our body, how to let go of all the, um, how to detoxify our body of things that no longer resonate with us. So it is for that reason that I really want that because when I think about how that course is going to benefit me and really feel that, wow, how much um, more I can take care of myself and really feel comfortable in my own body if I have that course to guide me. And, and also I have this level of comfort with the um, the integrity of Emilia. So I really enjoy the way she teaches and her authenticity and all of that. And when I feel into all that and really send it out to the universe, that's the intention. That's really 
the the universe can understand that because the universe understand intention and frequency and or vibration. So all that and um, it's a different language that the universe understand. Um, okay, let me see. I, I, have a, I have a question. Sure. Yes, please. Well, I'm just wondering about the idea of um, like wanting something. If I want something, <laughs> am I creating lack because I'm saying I don't have it? Or if I, I, I actually sort of almost pretend that I have it, then I'm going to catch up to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, good like question. I'm, I'm confused with that. Yeah. yeah. Good question. That's actually what um, is leads into the 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 next thing I want to talk about is really. <clears throat> um, it's about so what what intention actually is. So as I mentioned, intention is really how you feel, and you can't lie because energy cannot you cannot lie with energy. Energy does not lie. So if you feel lack, that lack is also within the intention as well. Okay. So okay. as you send that out the you yeah so when you have that lack that's already in that creation because your intention is to create when you have that lack already in there it's like a mixed message so <clears throat> right so if you don't if you don't really um get clear about what it is that you actually want, then all of these unclear or unconscious um, intentions are also lumped in to the one that you actually want. <clears throat> okay. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do. My, my intention is to have buttons. I intend to have buttons. There's no lack about this. I'm just going to, I'm going to have buttons because I need buttons for my friggin' dress. So <laughs> I'm just going to have them. There is no lack here. There is no ambiguity. There's nothing but a straightforward desire to make these buttons happen. They're going to happen in my life. They're just going to happen. And and I'm I'm fully focused on that. And I'm fully certain that they're going to be in my possession. Is that sort of more the more the general kind of way? Um, yes, kind yes. It's it's actually um, very similar in in that I know that there are buttons, so there is no lack. It's right. just a matter of how do I want to have the buttons? I even explored making it myself. I just know that I will enjoy it. So I, because I have all the materials that I will need to make buttons. <laughs> so there is no lack there. Right. I, yeah. It's just a matter of finding the most enjoyable and, and um, like the best way for me to get the buttons. Could I also say in that, say, I ask, uh, can I ask for help? So that all possibilities on how this can come to me are open to me, that there is every possibility available. It's not limited by my limited mind, that I'm open to every uh, avenue that this could happen to be present in, in this event, or <laughs> manifestation or whatever it is. Yeah, just actually it's, it's really, um, I remember when I first, um, like started to to research how to make buttons i actually have in mind the the way of you know uh, knotting because i know that they're there i've seen like really beautiful buttons um that my mom used to have on her um 
on her clothing because she like when when she was younger she actually um and and living in Hong Kong she actually had her uh, like most of her clothes is like handmade tailor made and okay. they create the most beautiful buttons I was actually looking to to create those like really um how to um because there are ways that you can tie a knot big enough that they can be used as buttons so I was actually researching that but mm. actually I found so many other ways that other people um, actually found to make buttons out of whatever it is that's available to them so mm. so it's really be open to play and explore no, don't don't limit yourself to just one way. I think a lot of the times um, the money issues that we have is because we limit it to, <clears throat> okay, I want my job to give me the money. I want um, an inheritance or I want lotterio to give me the money. So we're actually limiting the ways, the number of ways that money can come to us. It can only come to us through employment or um, through inheritance or through material. That's only three ways. So that's so very limited. There are actually so many different ways that money can come to us. We just have to clear all of our limitations. Any other comments, questions? Okay, then let's um, go to the second part. The second part is I want to actually um, go to okay so we know that the universe responds to intention and also vibration and that means that if we really want to be a clear creator like a really powerful creator we have to make sure that our intention is pure meaning that there are no mixed messages in there so how do we get rid of all of our insecurities, our like all of those mindsets that we already have? Which is <clears throat> comes to what I talked about last week is um, finding our own money blocks or money patterns. So I just want to share and let's take a look at, oops. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the homework. Okay, connecting to, so homework for last week is connecting with our money patterns. And imagine that we are preparing to meet the most powerful magician in the universe. And this magician has the ability to dissolve all of our money patterns. All you have to do is tell this magician what patterns you need to get rid of. And so write out all the money patterns you want to get rid of. For each pattern, write out all the details, give examples, um, mention how you feel about that pattern, what thoughts are associated with it, who else in your family has something similar, maybe from your parents, from your mother's side, father's side, grandfather's side, or um, whomever it is that is associated with your pattern. So, so then let's, let's um, now go on to, so what's the process of clearing the money patterns? <clears throat> so 
So select. So I just want to go through this process first. Um, just explain my thoughts behind why I, I put it this way, and then we will do a process with that. And so, so, so just select one of the patterns that you want to clear out. Now, I said money patterns, like clearing money patterns process. However, this is really for clearing any patterns as well. It's, it's, it can be money related, can be relationship related. So I just want to mention that. So just select which, what is, what is the pattern blockage or issue that you want to clear? Just select one that you want to work with. And then just review briefly all the details that you have on the selected pattern so that you can immerse in the pattern viscerally. So what do I mean by that is that you actually can feel yourself being in that pattern because a lot of the times when we are not connected to something, we can't really work with it. So when you review, when you, it's really you, you activate it because when we try to, let's say, heal our um, lungs, we want to activate it first. So when we want to clear a pattern, we first want to activate that pattern. And the way to activate a pattern is to actually immerse in it so much so that you can actually feel it in your body, feel all the emotions and the thoughts that goes with that pattern. So then first thing is to really feel where this pattern, like where do you feel it on your body? I usually like to associate something that we want to clear with our body because we can feel our body or at least I um, I hope you can feel your body and uh, some people are uh, maybe get to be so disconnected with their body that they can't really feel their body so I'm assuming that you all are not that disconnected and you, like if you if a pattern is on you you can actually feel it and maybe you will feel a, a tightness or you may feel a pain or you may feel um, a tingling. So when you are fully immersed and associated and that pattern is active in you, then you feel or at least um, just notice which part of your body is most associated with this pattern and and why I want that is because we can use this as a calibration um, kind of a, a calibration because when you have released it then your body will feel different that body part will feel different so you would know you would notice just by paying attention to that part of your body that's associated with that this pattern whether you have released this pattern or not because if you feel like if you feel a tightness before you released it and you don't feel that tightness anymore then you know that you have shifted that pattern so that's what I mean by using it as a calibration and then once you have these then you can start. You can just start by just starting to breathe in pure, pure love. So pure, pure love is a potent um, energy. Because love, you are love manifest. You, you, you are really the embodiment of love. Even though you may not feel very loving to yourself, at times, but in order for you to be alive in this reality, it has to be love there. So when you consciously connect with that pure, pure love, that is the um, that's that's where you who you truly are. You actually connect to your own power source. So when I say breathe in pure, pure love, I actually mean that you actually 
just, it may take a few moments, it may take five minutes, it may take 10 minutes, but the idea is you use your breath to bring in pure, pure love energy, this vibration of energy that is pure, pure love. And then you set the intention to release any emotions that you feel when you are, when you have activated this pattern in your body. So first release any emotions, then release any thoughts associated with this pattern. So what do I mean by thoughts? Um, let me just give a, so, okay. So each pattern would usually have a thought. For example, one of my um, money block is I feel that um, I'm not supported. So that is a thought. So this not being supported is a thought. It's not an emotion. It's a thought. The emotions, maybe I feel, um, I feel vulnerable. So that vulnerability, that's an emotion. So I would want, so then release the emotions and then also release the thoughts as well. All just by breathing, just by our breath and pulling in the vibration of pure, pure love. And once we release those two, then just um, release any other resistance to this pattern. So the resistance could be any negative feelings, any and negative um, associations, any resistance, anything that you, if you resist something, you're actually holding that pattern in place. So any other resistance to, because, you know, I, So that's what I mean by um, release that. And then the next one is to, now that you've released all the emotions, thoughts, and any other resistance, meaning that you have no judgment towards that pattern. And then you have to forgive yourself as well. Because you are the one who created this experience, this lack in your life. So forgive yourself and also forgive any other aspects of yourself. You might have um, picked up this pattern from your mother or your father or anyone else. So those are all aspects of yourself. So forgive all the aspects of yourself that have created this pattern in you. I, I think we might we might include maybe the sort of society that is encouraging us to just be consumers. Yep. You that's you know? yeah, absolutely. It, you can do that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for like mentioning that. And once you have forgiven all aspects of yourself, including the the human collective, like, like, um, or you may want to be more specific, it could be, let's say, something that is unique to being Chinese or unique to being Canadian or unique to a smaller subset of that collective as well. So whatever comes to mind that you feel is part of your um, aspects of yourself that you need to forgive, then do all of that as well. And once you've done all of that, then integrate that part of you back into the wholeness of yourself as the creator of this experience. Because when you... Um, there is always a part of yourself that, okay, let me actually just, let's, 
I just want to mention one thing is that I fully understand now that a part of me actually wanted to experience lack, this lack. So I fully acknowledge that now. Now I, I, I understand it. Whereas before I was like, how come? Why? I was, however, the more I observe how I create my own experience, the more I understand, whoa, there is actually part of me wanted this experience. I wanted to be right so much that I actually pushed a lot of um, opportunities away from me because I want to be right. So part of me wanted this experience of being disconnected, of being in lack. So aspects, there's an aspect of me that wanted this experience. It's, I know it is very, it may not be easy to understand why an aspect of yourself wanted to have little or very, uh, or, or no money. It's, it, well, we all wanted money. We all wish ourselves to have abundance. And we also miss the fact that, well, yeah, but we are, are rather inconsistent. There are actually other reasons that is represented by other aspects of ourselves that actually is participating in creating lack in ourselves. So once you let go of all the um, emotions, all the uh, judgment, and you forgave, and you forgave yourself and all aspects of yourself, and you integrate all the other aspects in, in yourself, then you become more of who you truly are as a creator. And when you're in that state, then that's how you claim back your own power as a creator and when you are in that state then you can start to like in the wholeness of yourself as a creator then you can start to choose because when you are in neutral when you have no emotions no negative emotions no judgment and you integrate all that into yourself all aspects that um that are creating against you, once you incorporate all of that within yourself, you are free. You're free to choose what you actually want to experience instead of your past experiences. So that's what the, the process is. Any questions before we get into this? Just a comment, maybe. Okay. Like, I didn't understand until, you know, a couple of years ago that the universe wants everybody to be abundant. That it, it's, it's available for everybody. That when one has something, somebody else doesn't have to have less. There isn't that. There's enough for everybody and everybody can have the same amount of abundance. I didn't understand that. You know, and it was more to do with maybe everything had to be within my control, but it, it's not within my control anyway. So it's a whole mindset that I had to shift that I'm shifting, you know, to, to come to abundance and, and to say that I deserve abundance and I'm, uh, you know, perfectly capable of having abundance and so is everybody else. Yeah, yeah. just a comment. <laughs> thank you very much for sharing yeah it's great it's so interesting to all of a sudden you know i i hear it from you and i agree is that part of me want to feel a lag but why <laughs> it's just time and it's come to me it's probably true mm -hmm. at, at first you may not know why and um, 
but yeah the more you just observe the more you observe the more you will understand because a lot of the times like for me i i understand it to be that i want to be right more than i want to be rich <laughs> i want i want what i want and i know that i'm right so i'm going to be like to, to to do what i think is right rather than to open up and allow the abundance to flow so that is my uh, observation everyone is different so you may have your own observation so any other comments questions no. i would say that uh, we also have to experience that to appreciate something different. I think that's another reason why we go through the stages of wanting uh, something, but not it's being out of our reach, but we are making it out of our reach in a way because of what we want to experience first. Yeah, like, like they say that the soul comes to experience certain things on this mm -hmm. life. So that's part of it, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, yes, the soul usually have an agenda. We want to experience this. But once you've experienced it. Yeah, then you say done. that why, why you should continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, point, so, yeah. So however we we stuck because we have an, uh, a judgment against that experience. Mm. I don't Reform. like this. So if you resist it, whatever you resist, persists. So that's why we stuck in a pattern. Yeah. It's because of the resistance. So let go of the resistance. Once you let go of the resistance, then everything becomes neutral. And once you, you become neutral, then you're free to choose. Your own experience you're no longer stuck and and I, I just want to share one one thing how I notice that there's to let go of negative is I um let okay so going on buses sometimes there are some more scruffy looking characters that you know come on the bus and you and I notice that it is whenever I, I I see somebody who may be looking like they're half drunk or, or you know really have a lot of big really smells like they've been smoking for the last you know twenty years of their life like I like to avoid those people and the re and just by me trying like, mentally wanting to avoid them that's exactly that's how i attract them to sit right next to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah. it works every time and i'm like oh my gosh i have to stop <laughs> i have to really let go and really switch my own thinking is that you know what this person is like just let go of all the judgment and when i let go of the judgment it stopped. <laughs> That's actually how I, I, I really notice. Okay, every time I you know, try to avoid someone, or in my mind think, oh, I please don't sit next to me. Please don't sit next to me or close to me. They will always pick the closest spot to me, always without fail. So try that. <laughs> Just see if that that is how it works. Very Just, good example. For me, that's how it works. That's how I notice. Okay, let go of the resistance because whatever I resist is going to actually draw that experience to me. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so simple. But, you know, the simplest thing, that's how you see actually, that's how energy is. If I have no resistance at all, then I can choose whatever experience and the universe will do its best to bring me what I want. But if I have any resistance, if I have any mixed thoughts, then the results I get is probably not what I want to experience. Right. So, 
Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I, I've, I've observed for a number of years now, but I've observed particularly recently that there yeah. seems to be a, a, a limit on how much happiness I can have or how much joy or I can have. There seems it's it's capped off. There's a there's a a ceiling on it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And will this ceiling uh, like remove itself or be eliminated if I remove a lot of these um, patterns and beliefs and things like that? Will will that create more space that I can have more happiness. There's no guarantee. <laughs> However, I think it is really worth like like I can only tell you that that's what I believe. Okay. That's, really, that's that's what I believe. Yeah, however, um, you are the one who actually has to live it, to embody it. So you right. actually have to do the work and see for yourself if that is true. Yeah, because certainly there's something that's interfering with the level of happiness that, or maybe my expectations are out of whack, but no, I don't think so. There's there's a cap somehow. There's a cap. Okay. Interesting. Something to work on. Yeah, then there somewhere is a an aspect of you that um that is holding that's kind of capping it for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anything else before we start that? The process? No. Okay. <laughs>